Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video and another kind of, I guess it would be more of a meta style video and talking about the current meta with Katsu and how things are looking for him. Um, we did a meta kind of breakdown video about, I'd say a week or two ago, so if you want to go check that out, definitely go give it a look, uh, give it a listen and let me know what you think about it. But this one's going to be more kind of finely tuned to the meta decks as a whole and how Katsu plays into those meta decks and kind of where I think he is at the top, right? Not so much from A to Z, every single hero, but kind of how he matches up against the heroes that you're likely going to see in your pro quest events, right? So overall, like the best thing you can take away from this video is Katsu's in kind of a weird spot right now, right? He's definitely not a meta deck by any means. I'm not going to sit here and say Katsu can win a, 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 a call in or anything like that. I mean, anyone I think can win for the most part. Uh, if they play their decks right and get lucky a little bit, but I don't, I'm not saying he's a meta deck by any means. What I will say is he's kind of in a cool spot in the meta where a couple of the top meta decks he plays well into, he doesn't play well into, um, and he's kind of 50 50 on, right? Um, it's really funny, so uh, funny and scary at the same time. So if you're going to a pro quest event, right, you're gonna be playing anywhere from I don't know, I'm just gonna throw an arbitrary number out there like six to nine rounds, right? Um, so you're gonna play a lot of different people, right? And and sometimes in events, like you get unlucky because you get your bad matchup a couple times, or you get really lucky and you don't face your bad matchup, right? Um, if you're a prism, uh, sometimes you can get lucky and you're going to face a guardian most of the time and never face a briar or never face a katsu or even an aggro viscerai, right? Um, and you're facing kind of your good matchups and vice versa, right? That's just the name of the game. That's kind of how the game goes. Um, and so with katsu, you're looking at three heroes, right? There's other heroes that you might see at your pro quest, but I would I would venture to say 80% of the heroes that you play against, I'll make a solid bet, are going to be one of these three. And Viserai, Guardian in general, but probably Bravo, either the new or the old, most likely the new, and then Prism. These are going to be 80% of the matchups that you go against, right? So looking at Katsu, you're thinking about playing Katsu in your pro quest. How is Katsu fair against a lot of these meta decks? And like, how is he going to do, right? Um... I think that he's in a weird spot. So the first time, <coughs> the first thing we'll talk about, we'll put these two down here. First one we'll talk about is Prism. Prism has a lot of new cards and a lot of new toys, right? So most of my thought process is going to be based off the old version of Prism or the old way Prism was played and with the old cards, right? Because we haven't fully fleshed out how she's going to be played with uh, the new meta. You might see, I think in the, in the early Pro Quest season, you're going to see kind of a similar Prism, maybe with a few new toys. I think some people will, Probably try to run Fractical Replication there to kind of go a little more aggro um, with the plus two loose Phantasm buff. You might see people stick to Slow Aura Prism, just adding in like Mirage Metamorph and a couple other new cards. But really overall, I think Katsu plays really well in a Prism, right? Katsu, in my opinion, is plays really well and is going to beat Prism more times than not. Um, so one of three of the meta decks, in my opinion, Katsu is favored for. I don't think anyone would disagree with me. I'm not saying it's a landslide victory. I'm not saying it's an auto win, but I am saying against Prism, I feel really good as a Katsu player, and I, I feel really confident that I can win my games, right? Obviously, either matchup can win at any given time, but I feel really confident. The second meta deck is, we'll, 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 we'll save this guy for last. Uh, the second meta deck is Viscerai, right? Viscerai is really hard because you don't know if you're going to play an aggro Viscerai. You don't know if you're going to play a um combo viscerai you don't know if you're gonna play otk viscerai and how viscerais are gonna play against you it also is kind of be you know 50 50 some viscerais might try to combo you out and just kind of stall you until they get to about 10 15 run chance and then come in and try to take tempo some might straight try to otk you <coughs> or some might do the mob skies build and try to race you um viscerai is a little hard for ninja or decently hard for ninja because that split damage is really hard to block out unless you're a control ninja. Me, I'm an aggro katsu, and my most recent recent uh, build, I'm running 15 blues now instead of 13. But and I'll talk about that later this week as far as update video. Uh, but even with 15 blues, it's hard to 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 prevent that arcane damage, right? Then there's also the null rune discussion, right? Do you run just one null rune in the breaking skill spot to stop his rune chance? Or do you run two null rune in the in the chess piece too? That way, late game you can present you can prevent Rosetta Thorn trigger. It just depends, right? Um, but overall, I think Viserai is favored against Katsu, but it's not by a lot. Personally, I think it's probably a 55 45 matchup if both players are equal skill level and you know both making the right plays. Um, I think Viserai is a little bit favored if he's playing correctly. However, it's not a landslide victory. So for the most part, we'll call it, we'll call this matchup neutral. Then you have Bravo Star of the Show or Guardian in general. 
I don't think we're going to see a lot of old times. You will have old times at your pro quest 100%. And we all know anybody who's played Katsu for more than five minutes knows old time equals bad day. Uh, you're probably going to lose. I'm sorry to tell you the only way you, I think I've beaten all, I, I would guess my win rate against old time is probably like 20, 30%. And I am not a top eight player by any means. I'm just, a, I would say I'm a, a slightly above average player. Um, so at least from my, from my understanding. So, Oldheim, the only way you beat Oldheim is if you get lucky, basically. You pitch stack really properly and you really draw gas at the right time, um, make him use his equipment early, and then hope to God you win. Um, but so we already know about that. But as far as talking about the other side of Guardian, which is probably the start of the show, it's definitely unfavored. It's not like Oldheim where it's like 90 10, 80 20 unfavored, but it is, I would say, a decent 60 40 unfavored, maybe 65 35. I would say 60 40 is a good, a good. Uh, metric, at least in my experience, right? Your experience might be different. And if it is, let me know in the comments. Um, but I'd say Bravo is definitely unfavored, right? He's just, he can take tempo. A lot of his cards have on hit effects that take away our go again. They take away our cards from hand. They make us discard cards and make us bottom cards out, right? He has dominate. So even if you side in on movables, like if you don't draw your movable at the right time, he comes in with an oak and old or pulverized dominate or something crazy like that, which I've seen both. Um, it gets really, really bad. On top of that, he has access to a lot of different card pool. So you really don't know what Bravo you're going to be facing. Are you playing a kind of a grindy control star of the show? Are you playing a really tempo based star of the show? Are you playing kind of a, a really aggro based? There's, I've seen a couple of those, right? You don't know who you're going to be playing against with him. So it's almost impossible to sideboard. I literally just sideboard in. Usually I sideboard in, um, usually my flick flax and my unmovable so I can help block his hammers and block his high arch and attacks. But really, it's a hard matchup. I've beat a Bravo. I beat Bravos in the in kind of the, just the Fab Discord, you know, in the last week. But I've also lost to a lot. Um, so looking at this, right, it's kind of funny. He, in the three meta decks that everybody's talking about and playing for the most part right now, Katsu is favored in one, pretty much neutral in the second, and unfavored in the third. So right. So how? Why does that matter for ProQuest? Well, if you go to a ProQuest event and you play nine rounds. You can get really unlucky or really lucky. Like, let's say, I think there's going to be a lot of Prism more than any of these, personally, because Prism does so well against Guardian. And I think people like Prism. And I think there's just a stigma of Prism being the best deck, especially in the United States. Like, Prism's always been kind of there. Um, so uh, I think you're going to see a lot of Prism. So if you are a Katsu and you go to your ProQuest event and you play six Prisms, I think you're doing pretty good. You might lose some because there are some great Prism players out there, but you're favored in the matchup, right? Or you could go to your pro quest and you could play six guardians and then you're screwed, right? It just depends on what you do. I think Katsu is one of those kind of rogue decks right now because it, he's one. He's a deck where depending on who he matches up against in his Swiss rounds, he can make top eight very easily, right? If you don't see a guardian at all during your Swiss rounds and you play five prisms and two viscerize or something like that, like I'd, I'd say Katsu, that Katsu, if he's playing correctly, it's going to be in a really good spot. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, going forward. And what happens with Katsu as a whole, again, not saying he's a meta deck by any means. But what I am saying is that I think he's going to have a decent chance at being successful in the meta. It's just kind of a coin flip right now, which shows how good the game is. Because you also have Reinars that are good. Dash is good right now and playable. Briar is still playable. Earth Briar is still nothing to, to sneeze at. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff. But I think Katsu has a good, good chance because he has a good solid game plan, good solid sideboarding. Um, and he does... Really well into one third of the meta, decently well into the second third, and then the other one's bad. So it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors type thing. Um, but overall, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think where Katsu's at in the meta as is, as it pertains to kind of the meta decks um, and the meta set, uh, of the, uh, the meta of this set. So yeah, if you like this this content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. You, you, can, you can say you agree or disagree. I keep having a couple of people give me weird comments and I, I never attested to be a top eight calling player. I just make content because I love to do it, man. Um, and it, it's enjoyable for me. So let me know what you think. Leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want to. If not me, go to another Flesh and Bread creator. Do something for them. Um, you know, get more people seeing this game, whoever it is. It doesn't have to be me. Uh, but I hope you all have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Uh, we'll be putting out some more ninja oriented content this week. Hopefully some more gameplays. Been trying to get those out for y'all. Um, and yeah. I'll see y'all next time on TCD Talk. Thank y'all so much.